Uh, yeah, it's been a while. Let me just explain a few things. So, my channel is moving to a new style and format. The problem with the minis, and although I like churning the minis out, they're quite good fun, is that the viewership is quite low with a detriment to the channel because the longer form documentary videos, for example, and that, are doing good viewership and viewership retention wise. So all that means something apparently and I have to rejig everything about, which I've done. So I'm going to move to a video monthly, probably the end of each month. It's going to be a full documentary, not like a full, not like three hours, maybe. But everyone's more interested in those existential crisis videos than the, me trying to lift Snorlax with balloons, although well, I love doing that. But that just means I can put more time, more effort, more resource into these if I'm only doing one a month. They're going to be better. I've got really good ideas. It means I can do a bit of traveling, film in different locations, all that sort of thing. So yeah, it's going to be more fun, just less videos. But I thought for now, rather than wait until the end of the month for the next video, which is going to be the Colts documentary, finally, I am going to paint explain your unexplained mysteries and yep that will be available for a winner i don't know i'll make up i'll make up whatever at the end but where the minis have been taken away i give you back something coming first of september i can't say follow my instagram and maybe this instagram that flashes up here and also you want my voice although i'm straining and shouting now and it sounds weird but you want my voice so um you can get it asked about a patreon i've got something like that coming up but there will be a, a free thing as well big things all right let's paint hi so here we are in paint in the painting area which is the same area but it's got paints in oh why is everything so annoying so in reference to my sleep paralysis video i'm going to paint a scene from somebody having sleep paralysis something quite dark and awful black black <laughs> no one will get that right first story growing up i spent a lot of summer vacations in mexico one of the locations we visited when i was about 10 years old had a small train that ran through the different areas of the resort picking up and dropping off guests along the way oh it's a good start look at that as my parents' older brother and I were walking out of our building to head to the beach, the train passed by, so we had to wait to cross the tracks. As the train slowly chugged along in front of us, along, I locked eyes with someone who was identical to me, except for the clothes that she was wearing. As we stared at each other, I felt a wave of uneasiness and confusion wash over me. Don't blame you. Imagine seeing yourself and you're not a twin. Felt like I was looking into the mirror, into a mirror, but wrong. I'm sure that she and I were only looking at each other for mere seconds, but it felt like time slowed down. This particular instance was made extra odd by the fact that my older brother saw this girl too. As soon as the train passed and time started to pass normally again, my brother excitedly asked, Did you see that girl? He continued saying she looks exactly like your name. She even gave me a weird look, just like your name does. My brother and I couldn't stop talking about it for the rest of the trip, and we even referenced that occurrence to this day. Doppelganger, huh? So we need to go back to the simulation video where I kind of covered this, not quite doppelgangers itself, but I've covered the fact that the matrix or the whatever the machine is that is simulating us has to generate new people all the time. Um, so what it's done, unfortunately, is it's glitched and you've seen a computer generated version of yourself that wasn't meant to be. Or within randomness, a random set of, 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 of statistics of numbers, there's still a chance that the coincidence is it was close enough to you because of the way you saw her and the train was passing. You might have had slightly different features that you couldn't pick up just standing on the platform watching, but in its random selection of a human, it came very close to you. More than a looky-likey, huh? It's a good story, thanks for that. This paint just isn't going on the canvas. Is that a normal? 
this is a really good start to this painting. Right, this is not an original mystery, but one which is the bane of my life. As a mother in her 40s, tell me about it. Where are all the socks? How do they go missing? It's literally a journey which goes feet, washing basket, washing machine, basket. Basket? Do they run away to live with the lids from the plastic tubs? <laughs> yeah, true. Um, do mice steal them to make them into sleeping bags? Are we living in a simulation which can't keep track of small things? I thought I got around it by only buying black socks. Black! But my mother will insist on buying my son's novelty socks, of which we now have many half pairs. That is true. Why is it the novelty socks that always go missing more frequently? Um, I've looked this up for you because I couldn't quite work it out myself because I know it happens with me. There's a equation to it. So it's L brackets P times F plus C brackets T times S. All that is within its own bracket minus P times A. So what does that mean? Uh, the sock loss index L stands for laundry size based on the number of people in the household P with a frequency of washes F. C stands for the washing com complexity. The types of wash T is multiplied by the number of socks washed in the week. P or positivity towards laundry is, subtract is subtracted from the sum of L and C. And that solves all our issues. Oh. How'd you make brown? <laughs> Going in with the yellow now. I've got kind of the narrow vision. In the sleep paralysis, I'm assuming you don't really have a full peripheral vision. You only see the demon. When I was four or five, new story, I started having a recurring dream. I can't pinpoint how often it happened, but I know it was frequent. In the dream, I was on a blimp. And at one point, the blimp caught fire and was going down. I'd be trying to crawl out of it, but knowing that I wouldn't survive. Eventually, I'd just be falling to the ground and I'd wake up. You ever get that where you jump out of a building and then you um, scare yourself awake? I know some people say that's, oh, that's your body stopping you from dying in your sleep, don't they? Don't believe you. <sighs> Pretty odd considering blimps aren't super common. And I'm sure as a child, I wasn't familiar with blimp related tragedies like the Hindenburg, for example. I had had the dream for a few years and just stopped having it altogether at around eight years old. I didn't think much of it and certainly didn't find it relevant enough to share with anybody. Uh, a couple of years ago, me and my two sons were going to the mall. My oldest son was telling us about his dream the night before. I can't remember what it was about, but he said he had, he had, had it. It's recurring for him too. Um, as we pulled into the parking garage, I was explaining that those call, are called recurring dreams when you have the same dream over and over. As we got out of the car, my youngest, seven at the time, goes, I have one of those. So we asked him what it was, and he said, well, it's weird. I'm in one of those round things that flies, and it just starts to burn and crash. It's not a plane, but I can't think of the name, and I just wake up before I die. I stopped in my tracks and said, are you talking about a blimp? He said he didn't know, so I pulled up a picture and showed him, and he said, yeah, that's it. It stuck with me that both me and my son would have a similar, odd, recurring dream. Just an important bit, okay. At around the same age, I know I never had told him about it. I hadn't even thought much about mine for decades. It was tucked away as something odd. I had moved on. Well, seven, week, seven, seven weeks ago, <laughs> several weeks ago, present day, something triggered this memory of this exchange between my son and I. So I posted about it on Facebook. I wanted to see if anyone has similar stories. And my aunt commented that and told me that my grandfather who died five years before I was born, used to work for Goodyear and would have a recurring dream about being on a blimp when it caught fire. I was absolutely beside myself. My mum didn't even remember that. Maybe even ever even shared it with her. This is interesting. Um, I'm not gonna answer this now annoyingly. I'm just gonna read a couple more dream stories because my video in the end of September, in the end of September, will be about dreams and it's going to be long and it's going to be weird but I'm going to explain recurring dreams to the best of my ability and I will also explain um, when people say well I'll read a couple more um, so yeah I'm just trying to advertise myself for later 
So my aunt explained story is super old, but I had a dream when I was about 12, I think, where I was in a bathroom sitting on the ground next to the radiator. There was a teen boy sitting in the bath and another sitting on the toilet lid. Nice. This is horrible what I'm doing here. Uh, toilet lid. We were all laughing around um, about someone's birthday and the gifts we got him. With the guy on the toilet shrieking about getting the dude a Dolly Parton CD. Several years later, this event actually happened. I hadn't known any of these people at the time and I didn't meet them until I was 16. And this was this dude's 17th birthday party. I never understand, understood how I could dream about a people and a place I wasn't aware of until much later. Another thing I will explain in the dreams video. But it's very interesting. What does everyone think here? Why would you be able to see an actual event? You know, people talk about premonitions and seeing an event in the head of which the next story is one. What about an actual event in the, your future, in your life's future? Surely that's different, right? I'm gonna have to look into that because that is, that is something. This demon I am drawing is frightening. Let it be noted that I'm incredibly pragmatic and a firm believer, a firm non-believer, sorry, when it comes to these things. For me to share an experience like this one means it really shook me and I truly cannot explain it. And trust me, I tried. On March 7th, 2014, I was out partying in Glasgow. Don't do the voice. I was in my early 20s, not a care in the world. We were so immersed in the party that the outside world almost didn't exist and it was a really fun night. I lived on my own at the time, so at the end of the night, I got a taxi, home as usual, and got ready to go to sleep. That night, I had an incredibly vivid dream, one that I can still remember almost frame by frame. In my dream, I was outside during the night all by myself, just me in the dark blue skies. As I looked up, I see a plane, a huge passenger plane. The plane flies over, and then suddenly it vanishes from the sky, disappears abruptly. And this is where it gets really weird. In my dream, I then say out loud, there were more than 200 people on that plane and they will never be found. I woke up and I was left with a feeling of emptiness and I know that feeling, that really weird dream emptiness that you can't shake for a long time. I know it. I was still half asleep and half awake. I was worrying for the families of those 200 odd people and how tragic it would be uh, to have your loved ones vanishing from the sky and never knowing what really happened. Uh, but as I became more and more aware that it was just a dream, I slowly stopped worrying. Until the next day, March 8th, 2014, which some of you might even remember that date there. News started to emerge of Malaysia flight that had disappeared. I immediately started panicking and I felt hot and cold at the same time and I rushed to my computer to read the news. Over 200 passengers were on that flight, just like in the dream. The plane had vanished without sending any distress signals. Nothing. It was just gone. As I start to see the family and friends at the airport waiting for answers, I knew right away that they were not going to get any. The MH370 was the plane that vanished in my dream, and in my dream they were never found. It's now 2021, and the disappearance of that flight remains a huge aviation mystery. The plane and the passengers have yet to be found. The families are yet to get closure, and I just know that they never will. How or why this happened, I still don't know to this day, and it still makes me incredibly anxious to talk about. Well, here's hoping that that does get solved. I dream a lot about planes. Where we grew up, there was an air show every two years, um, and there was always fighter jets. I know nothing about planes. Big, big planes flying around um, above our house. And I struggle, I struggle with that. The idea that it could just crash into my bedroom at any point when I was younger. I have the noises, I just don't do the noise. I don't like now loud noises. Um, loud, loud noises, don't like them at all. But in my dreams, I'm looking, I'm at the other side of the road, so I'm looking at our house, my parents' house, and the plane's like flying. Sometimes it's doing tricks, like spinning around. Sometimes it's a proper flight, a fighter jet doing, going zzz. Um, and then it falls like just like that from the sky and I see it and I never see it crash. It's never crashed in my dreams, but it always falls far in the distance. And then sometimes I'm either awake at that point, but the worst of our ones is when I hear it crash. I see the smoke plume and then it comes, starts coming towards me and I have to run away from the smoke and the flames. 
So yeah, that's just something to give you the willies. I'm coming to do 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 do. Bum 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 bunny ma. All right, let's carry on with the mysteries because I haven't actually done much answering. Okay, this is the most ludicrous one. I was about nine and jumping on my trampoline, listening to guess, guess, guess. New kids on the block. Don't judge me. No way. On my um, cassette deck with my bull terrier shadow looked up and i swear he said sup ridiculous i know um but he was a total dude and if he did have the ability to speak that would have been his vernacular for sure um well i can explain that one two things are going on uh you're on a trampoline you must have been jumping like a crazy so i'm worried about the your brain and two you were listening to new kids on the block which is quite a Hmm, dizzying experience in itself. So I think those two things have caused you to hallucinate. Throughout my third year in high school, every person I knew had class with etc. would always tell me, oh, your older sister's in my class. Uh, to which I'll respond with, uh, impossible, she's 12 years older than me. They would have a very confused expression and say, the girl in my class looks like you. She could be your twin. And then they would point and say, that's her. And they would always be rounding a corner. Um, I never saw her, never met her. And this continued for an entire year when she was a grade older and graduated at the end of that academic calendar year. Hmm. Doesn't sound like you tried very hard to go and see her. Uh, not trying to be rude. If you'd chased after whoever they thought it was, they're like, come with me, point her out. We're going around that corner. You might have just seen someone that looked like you, but maybe not. Maybe that was a doppelganger. But surely a doppelganger would be your age, so she'd be in your year. I'm going to say looky-likey. Um, the only thing I can't really explain is the occasional shadows in my house that are not mine, any of my family members that live here. Well, I'm going to assume you know about if there's trees around your house. But if you don't, if you've never looked around your house, it might be trees. If you don't have trees, um, it's ghosts. Um, or the moon's shadow on something maybe bats or owls. Oh, I've done brown, kind of. It's very poo brown. I used um, yellow, green, black, white, and red. My favorite color. My umbrella blew away from me down a side street on the way home. So my kid and I ran to pick it up and ended up taking a one block detour. As we headed back to our usual route, there was a loud bang, lots of noises. Um, we ran to see what was going on and there was a car on its side on the road and another across the footpath which had hit the electrical pole. And it was right where we would have been if we hadn't detoured. The occupants of the car on its side climbed out through the sunroof, the sunroof completely unscathed. The only person injured was a passenger of the car across the footpath who had a slight leg fracture. So in the, let's talk about coincidence quickly. I've done a, a bit of research. It could actually be a full video. It's quite interesting, but uh, we tend to uh, overestimate the occurrences of coincidence in certain methods in terms of globally big picture coincidences. But for things like small scale coincidence, we tend to underestimate it. So um, in their 1989 paper, Methods for Studying Coincidences, the mathematicians Percy Diaconis and Frederick Mostella considered defining a coincidence as a rare event, but decided that this includes too much permit to careful study. Instead, they settled on a coincidence is a surprising occurrence of events perceived as meaningfully related with no apparent casual connection. To demonstrate how common unlikely seeming events can be, mathematicians like to trot out, trot out, uh, the birthday problem. The question is, how many people need to be in a room before there's a 50-50 chance that two of them will share the same birthday? The answer is 23. Oh, well, that actually is scary. So what am I trying to say? A coincidence which is probably more likely than you think it would be. But still, I love these because they have an element of uh, spirituality about them. 
have you been saved by somebody is someone looking out for you that I can't answer but we can only say maybe and hopefully for you and hopefully for all of us but then what does that say about the person who did fracture their leg or or the people that do get into accidents where they unfortunately are not so lucky so I've got a lot of these things one of the oddest weird experiences I had was always seeing the number 11 everywhere it was just in a certain amount of time it started to scare me and then it ended I see another one I see 111 or 1111 almost everywhere apparently it's the universe giving me the nod that everything's going in the right direction how why would the universe choose that I've not heard that before I'm I'd like to know more. Um, it makes me smile anyway, sending out hugs and thanks for the great content. Thank you. I just mean like what's, what, uh, what is 1111 in spirituality? I don't quite know that. Uh, I see the number 22 everywhere. It's followed me around since I was a toddler. So I think this is just cognitive bias, right? So say uh, the other day I needed to get my car insured. Um, I say the other day, years ago. Um, then when you're thinking of that, you notice all the car insurance adverts more. Um, like the stupid meerkat or go compare man etc um, they're always uh, background thought until until the front whatever's on the front of your mind um, projects itself so or gives you that bias sorry so yeah something like that okay this needs some blue no it doesn't it needs some green I have a memory from the womb interesting start I told this memory to my mother as a teenager and she told me, no, you can't remember that. I was seven to eight months pregnant with you and was in hospital because I was very sick. I imagine your mum was furious. Um, I, was able to do I was able to explain what happened in the hospital with great detail and no one in the family has spoken about it after I was born. Interesting. And you got it right. What do they say? When you die, you can project yourself. Maybe you was a woo in the womb died for a bit that sounds, that sounds terrible it's interesting i like the way we never remember that part of our life the birth what do they say because it was so traumatic that we forget about it would you like to remember i think i'd like to remember the womb for a bit just to see what it was like in there the noises if i could hear people um the smells what couple of trees <laughs> a few more because I'm nearly at the end of this horrible painting my family was spending the night in our family cabin all the beds are upstairs in a loft and we had gone to bed that night all of us heard footsteps going up and down the stairs we assumed that it was what from one of us going downstairs to use the bathroom during the night when we asked each other about it in the morning no one had gone downstairs and we all had heard and we all had heard the same footsteps it's still freaky to us today. Someone definitely used the bathroom or you have pipes or this is actually not for me, but for Robert and is actually a ghost story. Um, I have had so many instances where I intend to leave for work, a friend's house, wherever, at a certain time. Something changes that plan. And I swear if I had left when I originally meant to, I would have got into a car accident or something bad would have happened. Perhaps a coincidence, of course, right? It just seems too frequent. I should have spoke about this earlier, actually, with the coincidences one, so refer back to that. Um, but what I will say is please capitalise your eyes. It's extremely important. Okay, this was probably my favourite story. <laughs> I have two identical water bottles, one I keep in my purse. I drink out of it frequently and I refill it about three times a day. The other I keep by my bed and rarely drink out of. Only a couple of sips before and after I sleep. Mm, water. I can go about one to two weeks without washing the one in my purse before it starts to smell. Yes, it's gross. I don't care. The one by my bed, however, starts to smell after about two days. Why does the one that has less frequent contact with germs get gross sooner? I've tried switching them and the one by my bed always smells much sooner. They're identical, right? Bed, the bed one starts to smell after about two days. No, wait, if you're washing... If you're washing the bed one more frequently and it smells sooner, 
then I think this is to do with the times you are drinking out of it. During the day, you've already brushed your teeth and got rid of any bacteria. Whereas here you're saying you have it a couple of sips before and after I sleep. So after you sleep is the key here where bacteria have time to mess about in your mouth. So when you're drinking from it there, and naturally some goes back in, a bit of backwash, um, that's what we've got there. That's what I reckon. Good. My husband and I have been dealing with a mouse in our house. Um, good, noted that rhymes, thank you. And um, we both believe we saw it at different times. A robot-like mouse that looks like a furball with slightly glowing eyes and it hums. We think it is the mouse decoy doing reconnaissance for food. I think that is some sort of spying object, definitely. That is something spying on you. Okay, I've been <laughs> mixing paints, but I actually have finished. I dreamed I was walking um, a path in a park I'm familiar with. I realized I was barefoot and walking on glass. Ouch. <clears throat> Let's move this out of the way before I reveal. Do a few more stories. Okay, um, my alarm went off. My feet hurt when I tried to stand up. Now, I never had any of the sleep paralysis stories tell me that they felt the specific pain after. No, I did. I had a couple of people feel the specific pain after. Um, so I would put that down to sleep paralysis, but I don't think we quite solve why. Like maybe if it's say your hand and you clench it when you're doing that dream, do you feel the pain? Are you clenching your feet? That's what I'm thinking. Um, I had knocking on the other side of my wall, right above my head, but I was the only one who has a room downstairs. There's a child in the loft. Maybe there's, there's, a, ch there's a child in the loft that, no, that you don't know about but I would ask some questions. Unexplained story, how do you edit the Welsh Twins videos and not die laughing? I don't think, I don't think it's possible to die laughing, um, but also that would involve laughing in the first place. That's not a problem. Okay, solve this, will do. In third grade in primary school, I got a diary for my birthday, which was really freaking expensive and luxe because it was custom made. Nice, well done. Um, it had the face of my dog, my name, every cartoon character that I liked on the front, and it was all handmade. And I took it to school to flex. To flex. I wrote some stuff in it, and every kid was jealous of me. So when I could not find it, my first thought was that someone stole it. I told the teacher and the whole class that they're looking for my diary, and everyone emptied their bags. I literally turned into a nine-year-old Karen in hopes of finding my diary, but it was not there, nowhere, not anywhere, not. Since then, we moved two times. The whole house was fully cleaned, as you usually do while moving. I went to high school, time passed. After I moved to the dormitory of my university, I had to do a presentation. And when I came home, I grabbed a box which was full of my high school textbooks to use those to help with the presentation. When I opened the box, that damn diary was in there. And I don't frickin' know how it got in there because organizing my stuff was always my responsibility. And my mum never touched anything that was mine. And I thought it was stolen. Mums always say they never touch your stuff. And then when you really ask them, they go, oh yeah. Mums are always organizing and putting things into boxes. I wanna know why the journey to a place you're visiting always feels longer than the return journey home. Two reasons, the excitement and the fact you're knackered on the way back. So you just wanna kind of sleep and everything's a bit blurry and you got, let's just assume you've been to the coast, the sea, and you've got sand everywhere which always makes things go quicker. Okay, I got a load of these. Um, my dad was an over the road trucker, truck driver over the road. My mum would occasionally buy him watches and I noticed he always took the watch off and hung it on his dashboard. I asked him why and he told me that when he wore a watch, after a while the hands start to go backwards. Another story, for some reason after a while, when I wear wrist watches, the hands kind of get magnetized together and I get very sick in CAT scans. Another story, I cannot wear watches, they die on me. It's not the battery. I replaced the battery and the watch is still dead. It's been an issue since I was a kid. I've stopped wearing watches years ago. Uh, static maybe, sweat. Um, uh, here's another one as well. Most of the times I go through a metal detector or screen in the airport, something pings near my ankle. It's never metal or anything. Why? Um, so I was thinking about this and I wonder if it relates to the watch issue because it's an electromagnetic field, right? So, um, that's gonna pick up most currents and all right, something that's quite big like that must have a much higher setting that it could detect the tiniest things. But all they wanna detect in the airport is like handguns, small blades, that kind of thing. So you don't really need to set 
a scanner to its max. But who's to say, and, and the key was sometimes, most times you said, most times you go through. So that's the key here. If it was every time, I'd think, okay, maybe you've got something metallic inside you, but I reckon you've just gone through where it's set to a higher setting and it's picked up, say, a small wire, like, I don't know, something in your hair. Body's capacitance speculation is our ability to retain a tiny electrical charge because of our faintly saline body fluids. Oddly enough, salt water looks like stainless steel to a metal detector, one engineer says. But he also says that the quality of pass-through detectors varies a lot. So, there's potential that that is detecting that, and it's potential that the small field we generate, however small, however much gives us that static, is also causing the watch issue. Two more. Back in the early 90s, there were some sort of pizza-flavoured crisps in the UK. I can't remember the name, but sometimes I smell and taste something, and I'm like, pizza crisps? What What were they? Uh, bits of pizza crisps. And finally, sometimes it feels like someone is pouring hot water on my right foot. Get yourself to a doctor. Okay, it's time to reveal the painting. Oh, here it is. So this is the perspective, I think it just looks like the last painting I did. Perspective of someone who is um, in the middle of sleep paralysis and they are seeming, seeing their demon. Do -ba -do -ba -do. Come win it, come win it. I have to be on Instagram because then I can get your details from that, I don't know if I can get that from YouTube. So follow me once again here. I'll put a, pic a picture up of it later, maybe tomorrow morning or tonight, and just... Um... Oh, um, just comment about your favorite type of tree. That's been me, Bob Ross. Um, I hope you all have a lovely couple of weeks. I'll be back in two weeks for the Colts video, which is getting close to being done and rocking up to about an hour long. It's gonna be something, it's gonna be something. Um, I'm not holding back and I'm pretty much having a go at everyone, including myself. So that should be fun. Until then, keep on doing it. because doing it will do it for you. Bye.